Go join the army so your wife does not get raped, that's all. Go and rip someone's ass apple out. It's not 50 tons of iron with a flag. It's a flag that weighs 50 tons, and it has a tank underneath. Why the FK you filming these bushes? Show me trenches. You don't need to die for Ukraine, you have to kill for Ukraine. Why should I lose my people here? Nastya Stankel, journalist, while the Ukrainian society is waiting and discussing the upcoming counter-offensive of the Ukrainian army. And the Ukrainian army is here in the Bakhmut district where we are now, in a deaf defense. Our story today is about the 54th Brigade, currently based in the city of Bakhmut. But the brigade itself performs tasks a little north of Bakhmut. And our story will be about Battalion K2, which recently showed it. In particular, how their tanks squash Russians in forest areas. Catch it if you don't take off. I'll send you there with grenade. F in S hole. Seriously, it was observing from here. A fucking Lotus China made unmanned aerial vehicle. Somewhere there's Russian unmanned aerial vehicle with explosives. He saw them through binocular lying on their territory. It fell down, and we saw their picture. Their kamikaze drone is white. Did he fucking close the door? Yes, FK. That antenna is screwed then. It'll be blown off by a kilogram and a half of plastic. Do you have a drone with shrapnel? With more plastic and shrapnel? Yes, the same drone. We will try to connect to it now. Plus, in this booth, they have a communication unit. There's a communications officer and sky watcher sitting there. And we want to fly into this booth, destroy the antennas, and destroy the entire communication unit. Well, to waste shells on it is just unserious. We shot here once, destroyed an antenna there, and they put up a new one where we broke the wire. We have to directly hit the unit. Well, not at the unit, but at the service personnel. FK? Where the FK are they hitting from? Slowly, the drone. That's the kamikaze one. And those drones could not take off, so he took a new drone. It can barely make it to reach. That's it. Wait. Is the door open? Let it crash right into the door. The door is open. That's great. Second, hit the roof. Let's see where it fell. Plus. I see it. It hit here, see the mark. FK Gyad. So there was an explosion. It hit with the tablet there. It should have exploded well. Let me stop the recording and play back it. Plus, go ahead. Go ahead and find out and sugar. Replace the battery. In the bulb. So, FK, it, you will fly the same one. We got our first trophy tank on the third or fourth day we entered this location. Russian tanks have no olives. They are the most problematic tanks. I just want to say to Ravagon Zavad, are you crazy or what? By the way, the thermal emitters are French. Yes, they really have no olives. And since when are you in charge of this tank group? I told him, go do this, go do the armor group. So he went to work on the armored group. If it was not for Kirill Kirillovic, I would not have gotten into the tank. I thought tanks were for the brave. I was very afraid. When we went to battle near Spurn village in Bakhmut area, I immediately went on a direct hit from 40M away. From 100M, for the first time in my life I rode a tank in battle. That is the concept of closed positions. Besides, a tank is not artillery. It is very accurate, but the gun has a short life. So we ran out of high explosive shells very quickly. We compensated for the missing ones, but it is so good for direct fire. And who's the T-shaped trenches now? The T-shaped now is our deep rear. Battle for the T-shaped. We take this position during the day. In the morning, they take it away from us. In the morning, we take it back for us. During the day, it's ours, and at night, they take it. And that's how it passes from us to them. Three times, this position changed hands. For us, it was not a strategically important position. But for our neighbors, to the left and right, it was an important position. We had to fight for it. The enemy could have made a very good foothold for an offensive. 
and we needed to inflict so many losses on the enemy that they would simply give up the idea of continuing to attack and counterattack. And so we did this for eight days, hours, theirs, hours, theirs, and in the end we exhausted them. Yes, we also had losses. Our battalion suffered losses, and it was also very difficult for us. We had a lot of 300 is wounded for our unit. It was a lot. How many? About 30. Well, look, it's simple. For the T-shaped, for the Barracuda Trench, for the left flank, died about. How many of them died at the T-shaped? 600. About 600. Many people do not understand why we ride with a flag. Well, why? Well, they say you are betraying you positions. You are betraying the tank's location. Of course we are, yes. Well, you think we are. When a 50-ton tank rides with a flag, believe me, that's the flag that weighs 50 tons. It's not 50 tons of iron with a flag. It's a flag that weighs 50 tons, and it has a tank underneath. These are fundamentally different things, you know. T-72 Falcon. T-72 Nomad. The MPE-2 C. When the battle starts, I remember they started like this. I see that there are 30 infantrymen there. They are with us on the stream, on the radio station. They see everything. They are already warming up the vehicles. I tell them to go. They go and out to 10 times, 7 times they go in vain. Well, while Russians are coming, we kill them all and the armored group returns. But there were several times when Russians just reached us and armored groups went in and saved them. That's why there should always be an armored group deployment. Why fight with your fists when you have a tank? When we started, we ran with him together in 2014, in all the trenches, in all positions. And when the battle started, if I heard my tank coming somewhere, I would go out and say, shoot for another 15 minutes until it gets there. Well, it's completely different. Then, you would feel abandoned, insulted. Who knows what goes on in a fighter's head at that moment? He is in battle, artillery fires at him. He sees a bunch of Russians, a bunch of enemies coming towards him, and anything can happen in his head. He may be a good guy, a great fighter, but at that time, he has chaos and anarchy in his head. And imagine that he is sitting there thinking that his... It does not matter that there are three drones hovering over him. He does not see them. He may not hear me or the unit commander shouting to him over the radio station. He's done. He's already... He already lives in his own world. And here he sits and hears, armored vehicle is coming. And he listens to the radio station. It's our armor. And they tell him, hold on for 20 seconds, son. I'll be there in three minutes. And he says, all right. The mood of an infantryman changes instantly. I saw when they were flipping them off. I was going on a tank, and our guys split the enemy off from the trenches. They say, wait, now they will come for you. And everything changes. One needs to realize that they are not alone. Give me your hand. I'm scared to be there. What if someone there is? I'll put you inside. Inside? We'll probably ride on the armor, but you'll be inside it. Oh, I'm ready to go inside. It's not so scary. To the right like this? That's hard. Come on. Got it. Left. Oh, it's hard. It's mechanical. You have to use both eyes. You look like this. Yeah. Oh, I see it. See how good it is. All right, Rusha, let's go. It might get hit. Wait, if it hums, you have to immediately hide under the tank. I run to the platoon commander and say, give me a walkie to the front line. He gives it to me. I come back and hear mortar rounds falling near the tank. I manage to climb up the turret, open the hatch. Something broke there. It did not work. I see a guy sitting there, my mechanic. I say, run to your room. As soon as I close the hatch, a mortar falls. It hits the turret. It pierced everything. It boomed. If I had not closed the hatch in time, it would have torn apart literally 10 seconds. Who 
was there when you were squashing them? Who was the mechanic? There was no mechanic. Andrew was. You were the gunner. Yes. And you were shooting. Was that the last shell you fired, or were there more? Well, in fact, yes. In fact, there was only one shell left in the carousel. Plus, the gun jammed a little bit. The tank was not actually in combat condition, so to speak. By the way, this is the most common question I read in comments. Why the commander? He has a machine gun. Why did not he get out and let Chekhov start shooting? You people are crazy. How do you imagine it? There are 28 heavily armed people sitting there. And you want a man without a bulletproof vest to get out and shoot at them with a machine gun at point-blank range. And they will not shoot at him. And the shrapnel. It seems like they were sitting there in a stupor. I don't know. To be honest, we saw... You point a gun at them, and they just sit there and do nothing. They were just in a stupor. You know how we worked. We were near Chernihiv, and people there were under a tank fire. That's ours. Are you sure that's ours? And even when a shell hit the breastwork, everyone was alive. But the acubar injuries were such that people were simply lost, did not know what to do. But here, when ten shells hit the breastwork next to each other, a meter away, they were no longer able to fight. The picture we saw was radically different from the picture the drone saw. Here a light battalion commander was in constant contact with me. We saw a forest area, but even from 30 meters away it's not clear. These trenches there are like a piece of bag, you can see everything. We shoot in that direction. He says, okay, that's it, we continue shooting in the same place. To the left, maybe five meters, to the right. We slowly approach. And when we run out of ammunition, the three of us see a picture, a trench, and they ducked and dived like hamsters, ducked and dived, ducked and dived. We were sitting there, did you see that? Yes. And Vitalik hit them generously. But I had no idea there were so many of them. It was as if they were gathered there on purpose right where I had to shoot. You did not have any feeling that you were running over people or something like that like whether it was humane or not. There were no humans there. If there were humans there, we would not have behaved like that. Not only the enemy. You know we do the same they do to us. We are at war, we are enemies, we have to destroy each other. If I don't destroy them, they will destroy me and my comrades. So I simply have no choice. The only thing that reassures me is not only that they are Russians, who have been so cruel this year that the hatred for them is just incredible. They are also criminals. That is all the scum that has not found a place in the world. And why were they lying there? They were working. So they came to us with a goal, with a desire to gain freedom. So we released them. I feel uncomfortable standing here. I'm afraid they will see tanks. Come on. If the enemy gun starts working, we will hear it. Of course it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable here in general. It's like they say in Kiev, I'm sorry, I'm not for war. I would go to war, but I'm not for the war. But it's as if Rusik's mother gave birth to him, saying, well, what a warrior I gave birth to. I gave birth to a boy for the war. Under 27 years old, in fact. Under 26 years, I haven't seen any military people here. Were you also mobilized or did you go on your own? I signed a contract at the age of 26 just because I wanted something interesting. I got a divorce and I came there. And I ended up in the army and I was shocked at how comfortable and cozy I feel here. Even with the war, it's very bad and unpleasant. But even so, we managed to somehow make a life for ourselves. He found his calling to squash people, the enemy not people, and not to squash, but to destroy.
The MP driver is still learning. You can see it's twitching a lot. The lever is a bit jammed. It's okay, it will work. Dear YouTube channel viewers of Romance, do not to forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are a little short of 1 million subscribers. Also, please ask us your questions, write comments. We are waiting for them. They make us very happy. And we are happy when you like our videos. Please also write what videos you want. We will definitely try to make them for you. Well, okay. Well, take a picture, film it. Tell them to zoom in a little bit more. Zoom in a bit more. Why the FK you filming bushes? Show me the trench. Yeah, like that. Zoom in a bit more. Is that me yelling so loud? Commander, more gasoline. Bring... What gasoline? Bring a grenade. If you want gasoline, bring gasoline. But remember that the country does not give much. Children, 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 my beloved children. It's just I demand twice as much from those I love. I don't like stupidity. I really don't. He knows what is needed for video analysis. Who ran out, what they brought, how they ran out. It's gathering information. We rather film a burning trench. And when potential targets flee, why look at them? Why would I need it? What's burning there? Just bushes. I love how it burns, how everyone fusses. But they ran away, right? To escape, yes. We don't know how many were there. Mario, you're pointed at the explosion, right? He threw a grenade, and only two of them ran away. A battalion is a mechanism. It's like a clock or a car, and each part has to work. One rudder or one wheel cannot work. All parts have to work. And when everyone works, it is much more efficient. And there is no need to bother anyone from morning to evening. They should know what they need and what they want. They all want to kill Muscovites from morning to evening, especially among unmanned aerial vehicle pilots and mortar gunners. It's a who kills who. I don't care about this. I need the evening statistics of the general staff. But they are competing. I killed two. No, I killed two. They seem to be offended by you. Oh, film that uniform. Will you authorize the fire? Of course, damn it, let them shoot him. Why the FK is 60th fucking round? He was waiting for an order. What order? There is a target, blast it. And you are waiting for that fucking order. He can't reach him anymore. Not anymore. He waited, damn it. Polyak, get the 82mm mortar. Siskin, get the 82mm. I want... Two fools running around freely, damn it. Don't pay attention to this puddle, okay? This hit you call a puddle. I told you don't pay attention to it. There are four of us here. The cat is the fifth, yeah. One went on vacation yesterday. The dog is six. It stuck to you, too. We brought her from Izium. Separatists threw her away on their positions, and we took her and brought her here. She was with them before, and now with us. Works for us now. A defector made up her mind. Yes, yes, yes. Gun to battle. Shark to battle. Armor piercing projectile. Aim and report.
Are you ready? Thirty nine shark speaking. I'm ready. Fire. They say that the rapier is an artillery sniper rifle. I was filmed once when I was 14 years old. What happened? I was holding the beekeeper's initiation. The apiary. Yes, I used to practice it when I was a kid. <laughs> beekeepers and war. Technically, the rapier also stings. <laughs> Who came up with the idea of living here? We came up with it. We were told to prepare some kind of dugout to dig. We came here, there was ice here. We offered it to the commander, he agreed. But I feel that there is a little lack of air here. It was flooded, it's wet here now. Until we air out. Is this how much water you had and it all floated? The machine gun was standing like that, and there was this much water. There were three people on the beds. The beds floated up and remained dry. The entire wall had to be broken to let the water go. It became wet when there was water. Did you break the wall yourself? Yes, the oilcloth prevented the water from leaving. That's why we had to break it so that the water would go away. All our stuff went down the drain. It must be difficult to sleep right. Nah, we are very tired after a whole day. So we lie down and fall asleep at once. I mean, there is not enough air, it seems, but it's safe. Yes, when there is a shooting somewhere, you don't care. So it is possible to organize life in a tube. Yes, yes, you can do it anywhere. As they say, if a person wants to live, they will find all the means. If we have to, we will dig in the ground and make the necessary conditions. Now there is an attack on our neighboring unit, our brigade neighboring battalion. We make adjustments. We deploy our drone, they deploy theirs for more accurate artillery adjustments. Now here is the hit. There is a Kamaz, a large mass of infantry, standing here near the target. Are you trying to hit them up with Gradmoor's or? We are still aiming. There are opinions that Russians want the Bakhmut Slovian Skyway on which they stand now. To turn here to Siversk. And allegedly, this whole group of Ukrainian troops will find themselves encircled. It will be difficult with logistics for them. They are as far to encircling us as I am to vacation. Our troops may find themselves surrounded. Our troops cannot be fucking encircled. What fucking encirclement? It's not that I don't see the encirclement, I don't feel it, and I don't imagine it. Not even slightly possible. Here, we still have 800 roads that can be driven. So what's the panic? We are just moving in, we are just settling in. I'm taking the brazier, you see. Retreating, my ass. Leave the panic, we are not on the Titanic. Commander of the second unit, by your order. Copy, I heard you. I heard you already doing it. You see, adjustments were made and we have a direct hit now. Is it a truck? Here is a truck, there is a bunch of infantry. This is their area of concentration. Here they come from Lysikans, from the highway, and pile up here, trying to advance. 
Spark 60 meters further along the bushes, it was perfect now. Take a little higher. Understood those dense bushes. Uh, yes, 50 meters, then another 50, and so take 200 meters above. They are gathering there, and then they start advancing towards us. Now it was great. I asked the battalion commander, Colonel, the first day of the war has begun, the second day, the third, what should we do? He says what to do. Did you have any other order? Go to war, don't FK with yourself or your people or your personnel. The FK do I know? Go fight him. If there are no new orders, the old order is executed. Personally, I am not very worried. I'm having my kid come visit me. Would I take the child to stay with me for a week? If I was worried that there would be an encirclement. How old is your child? Adult man. He is almost nine. Is this a toilet we passed in? Yes, these are our conditions. Excuse me. No, everything is fine. We have been here since last July. That was a mortar. Don't be afraid. It passed by. How close is it to us now? It flies over us. Russians are firing somewhere in the direction of the village. They are searching as we look for their artillery. So they look for our artillery. So this now is the so-called artillery duel. Yes, yes. Bolu, Bolu, do you copy? Copy. Keep watching. Come in. This is our observation post. It is called Bingo. You can see what we observe here. Tell me who you are watching, what they are doing. We observe Russians. They say that we have the Akhmet Battalion here. Let's put it this way. Sometimes you can see them, sometimes not. It all depends on the activity on the front. If you see them, is it your job to report it or hit them right away? Our task first to hit them, then to report. Killed or not. If you killed, then tell where you killed. If you notice where, report it. Then as soon as you start shooting, the second guy reports where you saw it, so that other posts can adjust actions and inflict a new hit. But first of all, hit them. First of all, hit them. Then report. Here we have a trophy machine gun, almost brand new. We took it from the defeated Wagners. Works beautifully. Observation to monocular. There is a thermal imaker. Another pair of binoculars. I personally remembered from the very beginning, when I got to the position. We were in a different position. There we had a machine gun. It was then that the Wagners were there. We were firing at them. They noticed a big machine gun and started shooting at me. Meanwhile, I was changing boxes. I ran for spare boxes, and my comrade worked with a PKM machine gun. And the third comrade carried ammunition. The second stands up like Rambo, starts showering them with a machine gun and shouts, Where's the raccoon, bitches? And the comrade with the calzing raccoon says, I am here, not you, the one from Carson. <laughs> this is a good story. There were several such funny situations. If someone or something is going to pass through us, they will definitely be spotted, attacked, and signaled about. The second in command here can at least throw a grenade or something there. So there is no one from that side? Well, from that side, no. We are the last in a row. Is there a battle going on somewhere in the neighboring position? There is a battle in the neighboring positions, and the rear is being shelled. There is constant shelling. The day before yesterday, we were set on fire. The roof was on fire. There were equipment losses. 
Fortunately, there are no losses in terms of manpower. And it flies like this all the time, grads, cassettes, tanks. They don't stop. Artillery fire began. A projectile hit our roof. A fire started. Slate began to explode. The internet is still working. I called my wife and said that we probably will not have the internet soon. She asks why. Because the slate is exploding, the roof is on fire. It's kind of funny. Today I learned the phrase funny, but not fun. Because there are shelters, and people's reaction has developed. After the first hit, everyone went silent. And when Russians try to hit the target, well, it's very bad. They thoughtlessly throw a bunch of shells. There were very difficult injuries. When you look at a person and understand that the chances of survival are very small. Because there were two penetrating holes in the head through the eye. Under the helmet, the arms were missing. How can you see this at 23 years old? You know I already got used to it somehow. The first or second year, when I started serving, it was difficult. I came at 18 years old, the youngest in the platoon in the battery you are burdened. The main thing is to remain human. Always tell the truth. Because in war, every lie will result in a very unpleasant situation. If you told the truth, if you were guilty, you got some penalty. But it's better that way. So I got used to it. Then I had a vacation five days to go to my wife. And no matter how well it was on the third day, I wanted to go back to the boys. Somehow I got used to it, a bigger family appeared, we all live as a friendly team. What is that? This is the gunfire. Maybe some Russian was spotted, and it will be one Russian fewer. Our guys are shooting. That is good. If it is not ours who are shooting, Sometimes you can hear the whistling of a bullet overhead. This is what they call the road of life. All the way to the village is considered the road of life. On each part of the front line, there is a piece of road where you can be seen there is no cover. It simply looks different on every other one. We are shooting with RPGs now. We have nothing else. So let's hit those Russians with an RPG. Doesn't it hit the Khmers? Did you measure the distance? Did you find the place or not? Bowden, aim the 120 millimeter mortar there and hold it. I know where, but now I can't measure. He aimed. Now zoom little. Have you passed the lakes of... I can see everything, the first pipes. 6,870. That fucking bitch is leaving now. Russians are not weak. They are dumb, but not weak. And they learn fast, very hard, and very fast. And we ourselves teach them. Who we'll call them weak? The Second World Army cannot be weak. If they were so weak, we would not lose territory. Someone formulated a thesis that they are stupid, and we are the best of the best. But this is their opinion, and then let everyone come here, and let's see how the best of the best thing is working out. Not everything is bad with us in general, not everything is bad. We are not bad, but not perfect. We need to think more. And if everything were so easy, everything would be easy. We would not be standing here, we would be at the border. I would already be shooting at Rostov. 
вообще взагалі по Білорусі. And Belarus too. Why exactly Belarus? I don't like the fucking liars. My credo. I don't like those who fucking lie. And for the Belarusians, I will definitely be effed. But they are fucking bastards. Not all. Lukashenko. Talking about Lukashenko and for those who get his orders. I feel more or less good about the nation itself. There are really good, decent people. And this one is pure hell. And the devil is worse than a bastard. That is all. I will show you now. It's every man's duty to pick up his shit and go to the front. It's every man's duty, damn it. Did I explain correctly? Maybe women too. Well, maybe. But it is the duty of every man. Until he was seven years old. He was allowed to use the subway for free, damn it, and the trolleybus too. He should go here and fucking fight. This is my opinion. Go here and fight if he can. I cannot have another point of view. If in the rear, he will be less useful than at the front, then only to the front. I see no other way out. Oh, so some have to crush it for ten years, while others do not. I was not taught to be a commander at the academy. I was given a battalion. The commander said, come on, Kirill, go fucking do it. Everyone is thinking about the genocide in Butch, about this, about that. Go join the army so that your wife does not get raped. That's all. Go rip out some Adam's apples. I'm not saying that there should be 20 million men standing here now, no. Sign up. Why should grandfathers fight? To be honest, I don't understand why 19-year-old boys who have neither wives nor children should go. I don't respect that. Let him learn. Let the child still learn. At 25, 35, 40 years old. Welcome to the armed forces. All this fucking talking will make me a fucking senior lieutenant. But that is fine. Journalist Anastasia Stanko, videographer Mykola Pastakov, editor Alexander Nazarov, driver Ihar Androshchenko, 